Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got three brand new decks for you and so much more great content. Don't miss out. Let's get started. But first, I want to ask you to hit that sub button, like, comment, ring that notification bell. Your subs help us grow. We're trying to hit 8K if we can. We just hit seven a couple weeks ago. Let's keep it going. We bring you three decks every day. We bring you bundle guides. We bring you pro tips everything you need for your Marvel Snap journey. So please make sure you hit that sub button. You won't want to miss out every day, but Saturday, six days a week, three new proven decks. Let's go. We also just finished the giveaway. Our next giveaway, our season pass giveaway, we give away 15 season passes every season, is next week. Our giveaway winner for the previous bundle was HXGX. HXGX, please do what the actual... Uh, video here says i'm not going to read this to everybody you don't need it yet so do it and i will get you your bundle as soon as possible we also keep track of every giveaway currently active in marvel snap on a document you can find in the description of this video we get nothing from it it's just a way for you to find great content more easily and hopefully win some free stuff in the process our question of the day is how we kick off today's video then we have our friend lauren whatevs deck that's the headline deck for the day it's a totally new take. Lauren figured out an amazing way to use Arrow to kind of break Storm that we're going to have to talk about. We've got a Marvel Snap Pro Tip, not Pro Top, Marvel Snap Pro Tip. Then we've got a deck from Gaming with Flash. That's twitch.tv slash Gaming with Flash X. Uh, hopefully he comments right away. I will pin his comment. You need to go check out his Twitch. He plays uh, late nights Eastern Standard Time, and he is an excellent player and really cool person. Then we've got weekend mission decks. Weekend missions will be going live later today. So we've got uh, five decks for you so that you can complete those missions. And then we've got a counter guide deck, which is a Havoc Evolutionary that's got a 60% win rate. We'll close as we so often do with my shop. All right. Uh, my podcast co-host Roy suggested I do question of the day instead of questions of the day to help the video flow. Let me know how you feel about that. We're going to move other questions elsewhere. We'll talk more about that in Sunday's video. Stay tuned. We're kicking off the Patreon. So I'll let you know what that is. I'm only going to announce it like once a week so that I don't drown these videos in Patreon stuff. But I am going to be starting a Patreon in Sunday's video, hopefully in Sunday's video anyway. And so um, maybe we'll move some questions there and like, I'll still hit like all your questions on these eventually, but if you would like like a personalized video response, that could be a Patreon tier or something. Cool. So our first question is Juan Carlos Ramirez wants to know if I do feature location um, videos for decks of the day, the day before that goes live. And I want to talk about this because I hate feature locations. I don't play on them where at all possible. I like literally refuse to. I will only play Conquest on those days. Part of the reason I don't infinite right away is... Tuesdays, the new card and new uh, whatever comes out, the new season releases, and I have to a bunch of content to make, right? Because that's the day. And then by the time I have time to play, it's Wednesday, and then Wednesday is hot, um, hot location day, so I never end up actually really doing any climbing. I do a little climbing on Tuesday night, and then um, like super late after I've done everything else, and then I get back to the um, grind on Thursday and Friday, like Thursday night and Friday, so I almost always hate infinite on Friday. Um, because I hate feature locations that much. So I'm really sorry. That's not going to be part of the content. I wish they weren't even in the game. However, if you want feature location decks, our friend, the deck building genius, Safety Blade, posts um, on Marvel Snap Zone a feature deck article for every feature location every time one comes out with the most up-to-date decks so that you can like take advantage of that location. If you'd like your comment read out in tomorrow's video, leave uh, have well, at least a chance to leave one in the comments, and I'll pick one, and we'll talk about it in sunday's video because remember saturday is my one day of rest all right we have the whatever because again she changed her name without telling me the whatever airlock this deck is absolutely fantastic it's got like one amazing party trick although it's powerful for a lot of reasons it's a lot of very good cards so that party trick is if you drop storm on turn three in either the left or right location right you don't want it to be mid because ms marvel can still bump um, from elsewhere then you want to play elsewhere on turn four however you can to get priority ms marvel is great for that iron lad is great for that mr fantastic um can be really really strong for that as well so you want to make sure that you get priority going into turn five 
that turn four play, as long as your opponent only plays one thing into the storm lane to try and take it over, or the biggest thing they played was last into that storm lane to try and take it over, you then play arrow in a different location and you pull that card out. Get it? Like now you've won that storm lane because you just arrowed and pulled the thing out. You should be able to maintain priority this way for a last turn, either Doom or Eliath as needed to win the game. This deck also wins just because it's putting a lot of power all over the board, right? Like, it can win that way. It can also conceivably just win because you're playing cards like Medusa at rate. Um, Mr. Fantastic is a 3-6. Ms. Marvel is a 4-15. Um, Iron Lad can hit anything. Gamora is a 5-12. 5-9 is still top-line stats. And all these things grant you priority. And then if you can read your opponent well, Eliath wins the game. Howard can be Echo or Nightcrawler here. Nightcrawler helps you with priority. So does Squirrel Girl if you're willing to consider it. Echo is really good because then you don't get screwed by opponents Ms. Marvels because you can just play Echo in the middle. Lad can be Drax. Um, that's perfectly fine. It's not ideal, right? Because that Drax isn't a great play on four. Um, if you're Draxing on four on your Storm Lane, that means you're not doing the arrow trick, which sort of hurts the deck, but like it still works out fine. At that point, you're going Gamora on five, so it's doable. Um Jeff can be Maximus just fine. Maximus is just now such a powerful two. A two six is fundamentally unheard of stats just on a body. You're giving up cards, but like because you're trying to win with location control, it matters less. And this needs Ms. Marvel and Eliath. I'm really sorry it needs Eliath, but it does. Like leader will not make up for Eliath here. And Ms. Marvel is needed because 415 just is so amazing at getting priority and winning the game. And if you don't have it and they do, then the deck doesn't work. So this went 26 and 8 in infinite for a 76% win rate, assuming my math is correct. And since Lauren usually does my math, we're just going to assume my math is correct. Turn one, uh, Nebula over the Quack. Turn two, Quack takes priority, especially if you have Iron Lad. And if not, then you just go Medusa over Jeff on an empty lane over Nebula. Um, turn three, Storm, not mid over Mr. Fantastic, who you would play mid. Turn four, Ms. Marvel over Lad. Um... And you can delay Lad if you have uh, the duck out and the duck is telling you, hey, you can find something better. If you don't have Ms. Marvel or Lad, you drop Fantastic. Um, but you make you want to abandon that Storm Lane and make sure you get Pryo. So then you turn five Arrow to win that Storm Lane is better than Gamora, is generally better than Lad, again, pending Quackishness. And finally, you have Eliath over Doom, which is equal to uh, Ms. Marvel plus Jeff. Ms. Marvel plus Jeff is technically more powerful than Doom, but it's more disruptable than just Dooming, right? And that's the play patterns for this deck. Um, I want Legion in this. I'm going to be completely honest. I think Legion with Storm with this much with, with this many ways to win a bunch of lanes would also be really strong, but you get the idea, right? Like, there's a lot of ways to win in this deck. Variant time. This is my hippie deck of the day. I got the Hip Nebula, the Hip Howard, the Hip Medusa, the Hip Jeff, and then we got the hip lad, the hip Miss Marvel, the hip Eliath. That's seven hips in a deck. I love my weird 16, uh, 1609 or 1699, 1609, I believe, Mr. Fantastic. Uh, I pulled the Jim Lee Storm. I bought that bundle that has the two premium variants that's in the shop right now. If you see that, it is a really good bundle. Um, it won't be in the shop long enough for the full review to be worth it, but that bundle is great value, the $20 one for two premium variants and some good um, tokens and gold, so feel free to grab it. Uh, this is the Gamora from the Nebula Season Pass. We're chilling with this arrow that who knows where I got. I think it was a bundle, but I really do like this arrow. And we've got, as always, Emperor Doom. Love Emperor Doom. Best Doom in the game, at least until there's a really cool one coming in a bundle in January. All right, Marvel Snap Pro Tip. Everyone always says, know the meta. This is how I suggest you learn the meta if you are struggling. So first, study the meta. And the way I would study the meta is to use a tier list that has a bunch of different decks in it. I suggest trying Marvel Snap Zone's tier list. It's a really good tier list. You can use Untapped. Um, unfortunately, several of the other tier lists are now gone. But like those are the main two I would use. If you know of another, please feel free. I guess like the Hooglins and the Cam Best video tier lists are pretty good too. So feel free to pick a tier list and use it. Um, then your job is once you've studied that tier list a bit, go onto ladder and play some games. Your job is to try and figure out how early you can predict what the deck is and what's in it. If you can start to get that down by about turn two, three, you've understand, you understand the meta and you're recognizing every deck, it will help your play. 
We'll go for more steps from once you recognize what deck you're playing against later, but for now, learn to identify decks is a marvelously important step one. So try it. All right, this is um, Gaming with Flash's Ronin deck. I wanted to feature a Ronin deck. Hey, I know that says Ronin's a 5-3 and that Maximus is a 3-7. I tell everyone this all the time and no one ever believes me, but look at the damn date on this. Um, the deck builders take a little while to update. It just, they cash with the game and it takes like 24 hours to update. It'll be updated by tomorrow. Just chill. Ooh. Um, Net Maximus is now 2-6. If you missed yesterday's OTA, check my OTA video yesterday. I go over every change in excruciating detail. We um also have articles on that on Marvel Snap Zone, of course. Ronin is now a 5-5. Five five. I don't think anything else in this deck has changed. So this is a really simple deck. Um, You play like a bunch of just good cards early, and then you drop Ronin, right? And then you can copy Ronin. With Mystique and follow up with the play of Maximus or, or Master Mold. You can also go Ronin, then you can go Maximus, um, Master Mold, and like Jeff to end the game. And that's just a decent amount of power. That's five, um, five and six. That's 11 power last turn, which is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you can choose where to play it well. If you have him as Marvel out, all, so much the better. Um, you can play Doom on the last turn here, but like very often better than Doom if you Iron Ladded sooner is a, um, Ms. Marvel plus Maximus or Ms. Marvel plus Mold is just generally speaking better than Doom. All right, Nebula and Ham can be Iceman and Nightcrawler just fine here. Ham is basically always replaceable by Iceman, and Nightcrawler helps you with Ms. Marvel and Storm. Nightcrawler can be uh Jeff, sorry, Jeff or Medusa for Jeff can be Nightcrawler or Medusa is what I was trying to write there. I promised viewers who've been watching other videos this week. I was going to like have typos this week. Last week before break for teachers is a bear. Done. Got a half day on Friday as you're watching this. Big time excited. So um, you need mold, but if you missed it, series drops return 1-9, which is apparently the day of the patch. Good to know. So 1-9, we've got the series drops coming. So be ready for that 1-9 master mold to be in series 3. Um, if you'd like to know all the series drops and you missed it, I have a video about it two days ago. Please feel free to check that out. Ms. Marvel is needed. I think Ms. Marvel is probably the best card in the game right now. And Lad can be shunned. So this has a 60% win rate, nice and early. I saw Lampy playing a version that was almost identical to this in case you missed it. Just in case you thought Gaming with Flash wasn't legit. He's totally playing awesome decks. You should check him out again. Uh, Nebula is better than Ham on turn one. Then Jeff over Mold on turn two. And you don't um, play Maximus, generally speaking, on turn two. Turn three, Storm if possible. Turn four, uh, Ms. Marvel over Lad, um, over just Mold and Maximus. You can Mold and Maximus if you know they're the kind of deck that just wants to play one big thing the next two turns. Turn five, Ronin, then Mystique and Mold or Maximus and Doom. Cool, oh, that's the deck. Nice and simple, right? We've got some variants. This is a Spotlight Nebula that I got. It's a lovely Chibi Nebula. Um, I've got the hips for the Ham, the Mold, the Jeff. The, uh, oh, that's all, and the Ronin. So I put four in here. I also have the Iron Lad hip. You saw that last deck. I decided to run this one that I never run to sh show you the other mold. Um, I've got the uh, Peach Mocha Mystique. I love this one. It's gold. Another random Jim Lee I pulled is this Rogue. Um, because I used that other Jim Lee Storm, I decided to run the gold Storm I have, and I got this Maximus um, from just a random cash early. I think it's the best one in the game. That is variance for this deck. You should absolutely try it out. It's really strong and really fun. Okay, so we for weekend mission decks, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two Havoc decks, two Shaw decks, and then one deck that has both. These are the highest win rate and most consistent decks for each I can find, although the sample size isn't always super huge. Havoc deck number one. Oh, sorry. Let's go back one sec. The, um, we're going to look at actually technically three Havoc decks because our feature deck, our third feature deck, is our friend Team Counter Gaming's. Havoc deck. So that's my favorite of these three, bluntly, but it's not also not counted as a weekend mission deck because, like, it's a full feature. All right. We've got um, this bounce deck. It's 60% in 73 games. I think it's really cool. Remember that Werewolf by Night is a 4 4 now, and that might screw this up. Um, the sample size wasn't quite big enough to take into account Werewolf yet. But, uh, and sorry, Widow is a 3 3, but I bet you this deck still works because what really matters is that you have the four ones that you can play with um, Werewolf after you play Werewolf. And that, like, gives you an option. 
because now you can choose either Werewolf or Sentry. If you have Zabu, I'd probably remove Widow for Zabu in this deck at this point, but this deck should still work really well. I would assume it's still one of the like top 8 to 10 decks in the game. Um, Havoc is not necessary for this deck by any means. If you like the look of it, please feel free to not play Havoc, but if you're doing weekend missions, it helps to have the card that gets you the extra collector's tokens. This is a junk deck, not super great win rate, 54% in 180 games, but larger samples, so we'd like to see it. This is just a straight up junk deck. Again, remember Widow is different now. This one doesn't run, uh, I'm sorry, Viper is a 3-4. This one is running the give the opponent the Havoc thing with um, Ravona and Viper, which is a play you can now make on turn four, which is significantly worse, but hey, it is what it is. Um, it's still often game winning. Many decks cannot survive with that on turn four. We've again got um, three, four drops. So if you would like to figure out a way to fit in Zabu, feel free. Ravona is stellar here. Ravona on the goblins and um, the Havoc are just very strong plays. If you, you can do the Havoc on five and still have the Annihilus turn six play which is really, really strong. So feel free to play that. If you can even miss Marvel and Havoc on five and still Annihilus on six, it's a great play if you've got that uh, hood out already. This is a strong deck. It's I don't think it's as good as the last deck, but it is powerful and very fun. Next up, we've got our um, Sebastian Shaw decks. The first one of these is Blobnos. This deck is all about um, that giant blob. So... Okoye and Shaw make your blob bigger. Elsa works with Shaw too. Shaw is in no way important in this deck. He's just like an extra decently powerful card because there are only two ways to buff him. But hey, two ways to buff him or two ways to buff him, right? He's a decent card and this is a very powerful deck. So if you want to complete those weekend missions, it's this is a powerful way to do so. We also have a Shaw Surfer. We always feature a Shaw Surfer in this. It is his most natural home. It's got a slightly lower win rate than Blobnos. Shaw is better in this deck, um, in this Shaw Surfer deck, but the other deck is better overall. This is our, your standard version of it um, that we've seen forever. This one runs Nico. That um, card can be one of like a thousand things. It could be an extra two drop. It could be whatever. In this case, it's Nico, which gives you an extra um, destroy, draw, whatever. Nico's also like reasonable with um Nikia if you get the double power and so on. It's good with Okoye and so on. So like it's a good card, but then you're not killmongering. So whatever. I just wanted Nico here. It can be easily um, for example, Colleen Wing. It could easily be America Chavez. It could easily be Goose, depending on what you're trying to stop. It could be Shadow King. So you enjoy that. The basic gist of the deck is you pump everything up and then you pump everything up more with Surfer and you win the game. Cosmo gives you some control. I personally like more control in my surfer decks than just Cosmo, but hey, to each their own, I would be running um probably uh both Shadow King and Goose were this my build, and I would end up um cutting Okoye and Nico for that. But as be that as it may, you should be able to win some games with this deck and pretty quickly clear your weekend mission. Finally, this is a negative surfer build. I had to put this one together because there's not a good deck that runs both of these cards right now. But uh, surfer like Shaw and negative likes Havoc and negative likes surfer. Negative doesn't love Shaw, but it's fine. You don't actually have to play Shaw. Um, Shaw loves getting hit by Wong Surfer or Wong Ironheart. That's also really, really good if you can drop Odin on top of it. That's just a bajillion power. Works better, obviously, if it's a negative, but whatever. So it's cheaper. Havoc gets really strong if it's negative. And once you've got your energy, like you're not odin in those games, but you don't always need to. Um, a reversed Havoc that you draw is immediately, even on the last turn of the game, an 06. And that's just really nice, right? An 06 is very, a very, very strong card. You can hit it with Ironheart just as well as anything else. It just works. The deck just works. Havoc is sort of filler here, but it's powerful filler. So what are you going to do? Ravona is really, really great with Havoc to make Havoc cheaper. Ravona will also make negative cheaper and also make White Tiger, Wolfsbane, and Ironheart cheaper. So you can get a lot of power even when you don't negative. This seems like a cool version. I'm going to tell you the one card I'd probably change. Um, I don't know how much I love Zabu over Magic here. I think Magic would be really strong. Cool. All right, we're on to our final deck of the day. This is the Counter Guys Havoc Evolved. This deck seems real cool. Um... I built one of these in my day one Havoc video, and a bunch of people are like, oh, that's really working for me. So this is the 
best version of this I found. If anyone has a better version, let me know. But this is the best version I found. It basically uses Havoc on turn 5 with Wave as a way to dominate the game because that is a 13 power turn 5 play. And then you can still on turn 6 drop a giant freaking Hulk. And giant freaking Hulks are good. I'm telling you I want Misty in this deck, but I understand why it's not here. Because Shocker on either She-Hulk or Hulk gives you a turn 6 play of She-Hulk and Hulk if you pass 5, which is really, really strong. You can pass 5 even without that and go She-Hulk and Gamora on the last turn of the game, which is also just crazy strong. Or drop a She-Hulk and Shang-Chi for massive power. Um, The She-Hulk and Shang-Chi one, by the way, it works if you have it on turn 5, which is completely hilarious. All right. Um, Echo or Nebula can be Sunspot and Misty. Again, I really want Misty. I'm not a thousand percent Misty. Sure, Misty's not just better than Echo. Built for Havoc plus Evo. So you should probably have them in it. The whole point of this deck is Havoc. There are better versions if you're not running Havoc. And Lad can be Juby almost as always. Lad could also probably be Ms. Marvel here. Ms. Marvel's just really, really strong and probably goes in most decks. All right. Um, so. Turn one, Nebula is better than Echo. Turn two, Shocker for six. If not, Nebula, then Echo. Turn three, Cyclops, and then if not, the turn two stuff. Turn four, Cyclops or Lad or Havoc and a one. And that's only if you have Wave in hand. You can play Havoc and um, Echo, for example, if you want to there. And your Havoc will end up being a 12, which is pretty nice. And then you can Wave, especially if you had Cyclops out on three. Um, wave and then Cyclops going off and Havoc growing is pretty damn good. And then you can play um, whatever the hell you want last turn, right? So you can drop Hulk, you can um, pass and drop, if you didn't do the, obviously, the Havoc thing, you can pass and drop Hulk and She-Hulk, or you can Hulk, Shield, uh, Shulk with Gamora or Shang, and, you know, you win when you do these things. It's a really, really strong deck. Quick variant look. Oh my god, I put the wrong Echo in here. I had the right Echo and I messed up. I have the cool new, um, not new, but the cool Peach Momoko Echo. I just pulled it and I messed up and didn't put it in. I'm very annoyed at myself. Uh, this is the Season Pass Nebula. We've got the Meltdown Havoc, which I just got. Twitch Drop Shocker, Jim Lee Cyclops. We've had a Jim Lee in each deck. We've got our Hip Wave, which is goes with our Hip Iron Lad and our Hip Evolutionary for a three hipper. We could have more hips if we wanted. We've got Hip Nebula also. We've got Shang-Chi. I put the Art Atoms in here. I guess I should have put the Peach in along with the Peach Echo, but what are you going to do? Because we have the Peach She-Hulk, which I have gold. This is, I don't know why I have this Hulk, but I like it. And Gamora once more. Ah. Oh. All right. That's today's deck. Let's look at the shop quickly. So there's this new Gamora in the shop, which I considered buying because I only have that season pass Gamora. But this one doesn't feel Gamora-ish to me, and I like my cards to feel like the variant they are. So I decided not to grab it, which, you know, whatever. Um, Oops, excuse me, wrong button. My bad. I... Don't need this, Jeff. I have a hip. I've considered the Rian one. I like the Rian one better than this one, though this one's very cute. Um, I have plenty of deaths. I don't need another death. I'm holding out for hip Bishop and hip Psylocke, so I'm not spending tokens on that. I already have hip Sabu. I have two different spotlight versions of X-23, so I don't want the baby. I have both Wolverine spotlight versions, because hell yeah. Um, and then I bought the Captain America hip, and I am perfectly happy to have it, because guess what? I now have a Cosmo emote. I, just, I buy all hips anyway, so it's nice to have it. I'm probably not going to run this cap. This is the only variant I bought from to in order to complete this that I wouldn't play, and I think that's a reasonable deal. What I did was I basically bought that Cosmo, as far as I'm concerned, because I was, again, going to buy all the other hips, so I bought one extra hip. Um, I opened that, um, whatchamacallit, that bundle, the one with two premium mystery variants that I told you about that has really good progression value on it, and these are the two variants I got. I got this cool multiple man that I like a reasonable amount. It's um, it's nice enough. I don't know if, what the Apple one is doing. They like I'd like some more variety in the multiple men, but it's a nice one. This is the X Factor variant. And then I got the Jim Lee Storm, and the Jim Lee Storm is one of the best storms. So I have that. I immediately got it in black and white, which is really cool. I probably want it gold, but black and white's not bad for now. And then at the end of January, the hit multiple line comes out. And then it doesn't matter what other ultimate man I have, because I'll never run it. I'm immediately opening the hit one. Cool. That's it for today. I'll see y'all Sunday when we announce the Patreon, do other stuff. Don't forget that Saturday, though, also, the new podcast is coming out. We did Hot Take Day with Lil Robitussin and Prashan. So make sure you check Marvel Snap Zone's YouTube to see that. We'll see you then. 
Catch me on the Marvel Snapstone Discord. See you soon. Peace.